No, the thumbnail and title aren't clickbait. If you have a 3080 or 3090, especially the Founders Edition cards, but also the third-party cards like MSI and EVGA, get extremely hot on the VRAM. So for most people that don't even look at the VRAM temps because they don't have the software program to even see that category, we just look at core temps and we're like, oh, man, she's at 50, 60 degrees Celsius. We're good to go. But your VRAM's at about 110. So today I'm gonna to show you guys two methods, one free and very quick and one relatively inexpensive and relatively easy to install to get your temps back down about 30 degrees Celsius on average. I still love you. So you can get your 3080 or 3090 graphics card back to high frame rates in games and high hash rates while mining. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Without further ado, let's save your GPU. Alrighty guys, over here at my PC, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So first thing you wanna do is to undervolt your card to about 65 or 70%. And the surprising thing is that this actually doesn't degrade your overall performance very much at all. You are gonna actually have very similar to OEM performance while gaming and even mining. I went from about 94, 95 mega hash down to about 87, 89. So not a huge, not a huge hit to performance when mining. And my temps went down from about 110 to about 103, 104, which is still warm, but that's in the yellow in my mining software, not the red. And obviously that, that does make a big difference there because Celsius, you know, is each Celsius degree is like several Fahrenheit degrees. Uh, but you can do this in a couple different programs. First of all, I would recommend MSI Afterburner. That's what I used on my built PC. Uh, now I have transitioned over to a uh, pre-built over here. This is a Alienware, so they have a built-in program that allows you to overclock, underclock the CPU, GPU, and RAM. I did do a tutorial about a month ago on how to use MSI Afterburner. I will have that linked in the description below. You can follow that along if you've never used the program before. But as you can see here, I'm down at uh, 65 degrees. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm at a 65% power limit here. And also did some gaming with that. I uh, played Apex Legends and Call of Duty Cold War with a frames uh, a FPS counter in the top of the screen. And uh, my frames per second went, it went down about three to five, which on a 3080 and an i7 is still extremely high at 1440. Now, granted, you could just keep your card running at that lower power threshold for eternity, basically for the life of the card. And basically you'd be keeping your temperatures down. But if you're like me, you probably want to utilize 100% of the horsepower in these 3080s and 3090s. And the Founders Editions are notorious for having these high VRAM temps. Now, don't get me wrong. The third-party cards as well, such as MSI and EVGA, they're getting the same issues, uh, but it seems like a major, major issues on the FE card. So I would say this is kind of just a temporary fix because you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna get back up there to the 80, 90, even 100 percent power output again. And the best way to do that, the cheapest and easiest way to get your card temperatures down, your VRAM temps down is with a thermal pad. So over here, this is the one that has the best reviews, 267 ratings at a 4.5 star. I read through probably about 20 of the reviews. Uh, almost all of them are positive, and the ones that were negative I read through, it sounds not to be an asshole, but like the person that was doing the install had no idea what they were doing. They probably used it as a tampon or something. But yeah, this exact model will be linked in the description below for 90% of the 3080s and 3090s out there. Uh, definitely the Founders Edition cards. The width that you need is 1.5 millimeter. There are other ones. You can do uh, a one millimeter and then double stack them to two millimeters. I've seen a lot of people doing that because they say obviously when they get hot, they compress and squish. But from the majority of the install videos as well as uh, forums and whatnot that I've read, 1.5 millimeters is what you want. I've already ordered uh, four of these. Now they are 15, I'm sorry, 16 bucks a pop, which isn't necessarily cheap, but relatively inexpensive for dropping your temperatures anywhere between 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's the average that I'm seeing. Some people are saying they only got about five out of it. But generally, people are saying it dropped their VRAM temps about 30 to 40 Celsius, which is huge. Um, and that, that's all the way at 100% power output. So that's pretty impressive. You're going to want to get about four of these. And, you know, if you get it through Amazon, you can just return the ones that you don't use free of charge. You just apply for a refund label. You, you print it out, stick it on the box and send it back. So I have ordered four of these and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this channel, taking apart my... 3080. The 3080 version that I have is close to a Founders Edition card, but it's inside of a Dell slash Alienware Aurora R11. So Dell has their own OEM 
3080s and 3090s and all the other 30 cards. But they basically what they do, I'm playing a little B-roll video here. They put on their own aluminum heat sink on the top, which is like kind of a, a heat block, I guess you could say. And then also uh, some cooling fins on the side and two fans on the bottom. So better cooling than the Founders Edition card, but not by a whole lot. So what you're going to do basically is take off the top and bottom shroud, which isn't the easiest thing to do in the world, but it's not by any means. If you're technologically savvy and you built PCs in the past, it isn't going to be crazy or anything. I'll walk you guys through it step by step, so not to worry there. We're going to get our temps down, boys. But in the meantime, while you're waiting the two days, if you have Amazon Prime to get these. So in the meantime, boys, while you're waiting for your thermal pads to come in, you might also want to pick up some thermal paste too. I'll have that link down there in the description below. I know OEM or stock factory uh, thermal paste isn't the best either. So, um, I have a ton of syringes of thermal paste. They're not really needles. You can't shoot them into your urethra tip or anything like that, but they're, uh, they, they look like little syringes and, um, generally I use them for like CPUs and stuff. But, um, while you are replacing the thermal pads, it's also a good time since we are trying to get our temps down as low as possible to apply with some good aftermarket thermal paste as well. So I'll have a link. I'll have a link to the exact kit that I have here. Actually, I'll show you what I got little stem shots from uh, Escape from Tarkov stem packs when you're fighting Sherman out there in the woods. But uh, I would say an alcohol wipe to wipe off the existing thermal paste off of the VRAM and uh, basically off of all the conductors on there. And then some new thermal paste, the thermal pads, put everything back together. And then also you want to make sure that your case obviously has adequate cooling. I, I'm in a somewhat small form. It's between a small form factor and a mid tower, but it's an Alienware R11, which has already been uh, known for not having the best cooling. It has 120 millimeter intake fan and 120 millimeter exhaust fan. Granted, my CPU is water cooled. Um, I don't think Alienware offers GPU water cooling. They used to a couple years ago, but I don't think they offered on the 30, the 30 series cards. But anyway, and that's another thing you could water cool these cards, but it is a bitch and a half. I have watched the videos from Linus Tech Tips and Jay's Two Cents and a couple other channels doing the installs. And they're all like, holy crap, like we water cool things all the time. And these 30 series cards are a bitch to water cool. I don't know why, but it's just, I guess it's just trying to work on them. They're kind of, they're kind of wonky. You got to like dislocate your fingers to get in there. And you know, that was creepy as shit. But yeah, in the meantime, you guys know what to do. Thermal paste thermal pads and undervolt to about 65%. You're not going to see a huge hit to your gaming or even your mining, to be honest, um, which is good because I was worried like you're cutting down to 65%. I was thinking, oh, geez, my hash rate and my gaming, my frames per second are going to go to 65%. Not really. You, I saw like a like a 5% decrease for noticeably lower temp. So do that. And uh, Again, in about two days when my thermal pads and all that good stuff gets here, I'll be doing a tutorial for you guys step by step, um, especially if you are an R10 or R11 Alienware owner. This would be a great video for you because I'll actually take apart the chassis and get to the graphics card and all that good stuff. If you enjoyed this video, it was beneficial for you guys. It helped you to not fry your graphics card tonight. Liking the video helps it to get seen by more people so this information can assist them as well. And they cannot smoke their GPU as well. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.